Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Vane of Moonline Beach Dental, and I wanted to do a very important video on myofunctional therapy because it is such a hidden element to dentistry that even most dentists don't know about or appreciate. So I have my guest with me, if you'd like to introduce yourself. My name is Jessica Glover. I am a registered dental hygienist and orofacial myofunctional therapist. I work for Jody K. Schuler & Associates, who are in Del Mar, California. And I work with um, kids and adults for retraining proper oral rest posture. So people are like, what's that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that. And it's been really difficult for me to explain to patients the importance of it. I will not be successful with what I do if this is something we're identifying as a factor. So tongue ties, I've done a video about that that got a lot of traction, especially because my son had a double tongue and lip tie. And essentially, if elements like that aren't treated or kids have passy mouth where they have sucked on a pacifier too long, they'll develop destructive swallowing habits. It could be something hidden, like their adenoids are so big that they can't get proper air into their airway. They'll develop an open mouth posture. Their tongue doesn't go where it needs. And then they can either grow, they'll develop developmentally deficient without that tongue getting to where it needs to go. And it becomes so habituated that it creates lifelong problems. And if it's untreated, they become either a severely destructive bite or they have sleep apnea, which can cause death. I mean, it, it can increase the risk of heart attack and stroke by 60% increase. So what Jessica does is really, really important. So when people come to me um, as a myobrace provider and Invisalign provider, they're like, eh, my teeth are crooked. I want you to fix my smile but they're not understanding that their teeth might be bowed apart like this because their tongue sits there all day versus sitting where it needs to be. And how do we do that? She is essentially a personal trainer for the tongue. Absolutely. If you said, I want to get ripped, I want a hot summer body with a six pack, you cannot just go to the gym twice by yourself and expect it to happen. It takes a personal trainer to teach you how to do the exercises, which then you can do yourself and then you can see those results but she is essentially a personal trainer. Even I, with all of my knowledge, you've been doing this longer than me, I'm at 20 years, and you're at 20... 23 years as a yeah. dental hygienist. So you've been in the mouth longer than I have. Um, I love that you're marrying the passion that you have for mm -hmm. the teeth with the tongue now, um, but you could ask me all you wanted and I can't do what she does. It is specialty training. So I wanted for Jessica to have the opportunity about how that the dentist can partner with the myofunctional therapist to get you the results, especially your child, the results that they need so they have a healthier airway and healthier long-term lifestyle and also a nice cosmetic benefit. Absolutely. It is an interdisciplinary approach to this sort of therapy to have the dentist, the pediatric dentist, the orthodontist, the myofunctional therapist, the speech therapist, everybody on board so we can all, we can end up with the same result, giving lifelong healthy benefits, not just having straight teeth. So yeah. my, my thing is I want to make sure that when my client has braces, that they are able to keep their teeth straight for the whole time, for the duration of their life. So they're not um, going back to the dentist and, or orthodontist in 20 years saying my teeth are crooked again. Yeah. Now the tongue it, it is so much stronger than people realize. Essentially, if there's something called the neutral zone and the teeth sit in between the pressure of the lips and the pressure of the tongue. So if I cut my lip off, my tongue would push my teeth out of my mouth. If I cut my tongue out, my lips could actually push my teeth back. So essentially, we don't give it the respect it deserves. Right, right. Our, our tongue is nature's palatal expander. Yes. It's nature's retainer. And our lips are nature's braces. So by keeping our tongue up on the palate, right behind the two front teeth, 
and our lips together, sealed, lightly sealed, our teeth barely spread apart, nice freeway mm -hmm. space between the upper and lower arch, and we're breathing through our nose, we're going to end up having a nice, healthy appearance, especially during growth. That's the main thing. When kids are yeah. little and they're mm -hmm. growing, if they have that nice seal tongue up, they're going to grow in a nice downward horizontal appearance versus having an open mouth. If kids have an open mouth, their tongue is low, whether it's due to restriction or enlarged tonsils, adenoids, mm -hmm. allergies, or maybe they have their thumb in their mouth for too long yeah. and their palate is too high. That child is going to grow in a downward vertical, having a longer face if you think of that way. Right, so you're gonna help shape the jaws. So essentially, my role, an orthodontist role, is we can move the teeth. So let me give you a little bit of background about myself, because what greater example of why I believe in this so much. I was a thumb sucker until age eight. So, and I'm, I'm old, so in the early 80s, there were not great pictures that I could show you my bite. So essentially I had really flared teeth. Um, I the generation I had of orthodontics, they pulled four teeth, shoved everything back with headgear. I got my braces off. Immediately on one of the follow-up visits, they put me into what's called a positioner, which is very similar to the myobrace, because um, I was told then I had a tongue thrust and I was pushing my teeth out of position. So I wore this positioner um, pretty much when I got home from school, all through the night, and then I was given a retainer with a hole drilled in the top to retrain my tongue and it taught me how to reposition. So I personally never went through myofunctional therapy. That was how they treated it in the late 80s. I'm dating myself here. This is... But nowadays we have a lot more options and a lot more knowledge. So when I have patients and parents, especially that come in and I tell them I have to partner with the myofunctional therapist, I found it a huge obstacle. And, I, and what we don't know, we don't know. So people don't value what they don't know. And I've had a hard time giving people the value. And I think this video is gonna really help. So Jessica can explain. We will have another video on how she does a consultation and a workup. But for you to see what she's looking for um, so and, and how she develops a treatment plan for you and a treatment regimen so that your child is swallowing better. And keep in mind too, if your child can't swallow because of enlarged adenoids, you're also gonna have a child that's a lot more prone to getting sick. Our mouth is not, doesn't have the filters for the air like our nose does. Mm -hmm. Our nose has a nasociliary elevator that helps whisk out all the pathogens that we can breathe in. So if we're sucking in air all night, that's not only going to cause a lot of mouth issues, like, like overly dry mouth that leads to bleeding gums and gum disease. Absolutely. But you, these are kids who are going to be really burdened with a lot of illness. So... Um, yeah, if you, if you want to speak about how you do your evaluations, um, maybe we should first rewind to how doctors refer to you. So I give them a referral slip. So if and you have a patient that you see that it has been an adult patient, for instance, if we're talking about adults, and they have had their, uh, they had braces as a child, didn't wear retainers, their teeth have shifted, they want braces again, look at the why. Why mm -hmm. are their teeth shifting again? And if you feel like their tongue position may not be in the correct, behind the teeth, on the, on the roof of the mouth, mm -hmm. um, maybe they have some scalloping, the sides of the tongue might be scalloped. That indicates that the tongue is either sitting too low or it's sitting right between the teeth. If you feel like they are not, um, that they're, maybe they have an open bite, they're not able to bite into sandwiches properly, you want to have them just evaluated. And that's where I can come in. And I can do a, um, a 20 to 30 minute quick assessment that just, I, I see them swallow, I can look. I've been looking at mouths for close to 25 years. Now that I've been doing my functional therapy for about two to three years, I see I can see things very, very easily. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to determine, yes, this patient needs a more thorough evaluation. And that's where we bring them into our office at Jody Schuler and Associates in Del Mar. 
and I will do a full 90 minute um, evaluation. That involves them eating and drinking and we take photographs. We do, um, um, if there is a speech component, then I have a speech therapist I can bring in to evaluate if there's a need for speech therapy. Um, and then we'll decide whether it's just my functional therapy. They just need to relearn where to place their tongue. Everything else is good. We can set up a program that generally involves 20 to 30 sessions and I will write up a full evaluation report in the beginning and then after the 10 sessions and then after the end of the 20 sessions. The initial 10 sessions are weekly. Like going to the gym, you want to remember what the exercises are mm -hmm. and being watched so that I'm able to see the progress and we move on to the next exercise or the next function, whether it's learning how to, relearning how to swallow, relearning how to chew, mm -hmm. relearning how to breathe through the nose constantly. Now, if there is um, a, um, a reason that they cannot breathe through their nose, then I will refer to either an allergist or an ear, nose, and throat doctor mm -hmm. to rule out um, impaction in maybe their airway, whether it's due to a deviated septum or allergies, chronic allergies, or um, their tonsils. If a child is a chronic mouth breather and maybe their tonsils are too enlarged, then we will refer out and let that professional mm -hmm. take charge of whether it needs po possible medication, surgery, or whatever. Yeah. After that has been ruled out, then I can start the therapy again. Same with the, th the tongue posture, making sure that the tongue can freely move. If it's restricted, if there's a tongue tie and the tongue cannot move up naturally to the palate, I can't help them. So I would have to refer either back to you or back to someone who does phrenectomies. Yeah. Um, and one of the cases we're going to do... Um, where she does her initial workup consultation, I was scheduled to do the phrenectomy and the orthodontics, but we needed to have her be evaluated first and re develop a game plan. And, and that's just it. They have to, the, before a phrenectomy is done, it's really important to have at least three to four sessions so the patient is able to know where to put the tongue. Mm -hmm. After the phrenectomy is not the easiest time for them. There's a little discomfort, mm -hmm. but they have to start their, um, their exercises right away so that, uh, especially if it's done via laser, um, without sutures, there is a risk of um, reattachment, of reattachment yeah. and building up scar tissue. So starting therapy the day of, maybe the day after, is really important. Yeah, and so if for any of you that have ever had a relative go through a knee or hip replacement, you're literally holding your IV and they want you standing up hours after surgery and doing a lap around the corridor. And you're like, what? They just put in a whole new hip socket? That's crazy. They want your muscles and memory, everything being trained to work as a system again. So you don't have any of the inflammatory process lock you back into Absolutely. an unhealthy position. I mean, this is like doing physical therapy for the mouth. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. have major surgery and then just forget about it or right. hope that, oh, this will work. That's not, that's not the case. Yeah. And so I just wouldn't want to put someone through the phrenectomy and have them, and I have had this. Um, there, I'm, I'm sore. I, so I took it easy and then it's halfway reattached when I see them for their post-operative. It's, it's a really critical time to undo some of the things that, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we so were born with. So I'm able with. to build up, um, a relationship first so they can call me the day of I'm sore. What do I do? I have a game plan where I can help them and the the and be their cheerleader to yeah. work with those exercises to make sure that the tongue starts going in the proper placement mm -hmm. and and by doing that once then we start our, our our sessions 20 sessions or so they're able to 
move on to the next session much, much more smoothly, much easier with good results, with lifelong results. Yeah. And that's what my goal is. And really, I mean, if you want to look at it, especially with children like a tutor, you might say like 20 to 30 sessions or that's a lot of money. If I told you your child was behind in reading or math and I asked Jessica to work with them throughout the summer so they could learn and master fractions, decimals, for the rest of their life, they're going to be good at calculating the tax when the bill comes, figuring out what 25% off is because of that initial groundwork that it might have occurred in the third or fourth grade. So what she does is foundational. It's meant to guide you through the rest of your life. It's not meant, unlike a personal trainer where you could gain all your weight back and then you have to start all over again. I mean, ideally, if you stick with the program, you can... can it's habituating yeah. normal function. Yeah. And that's what I do. So a quick little background. I was a thumb sucker till about the age of six. I had teeth extracted when yeah. I was uh, preteen to push. We should start a back. support group. Exactly. I feel so um, bad. For I us. did not have a trainer oh. like you had. I didn't have that yeah. retainer. So I didn't wear, wear my retainers after having my braces removed when I was 16. And my teeth immediately started to shift immediately so by the time I was older and as a dental hygienist I think I've been practicing hygiene for 10-15 years I realized my teeth were not pretty and hygienists really should have pretty teeth and so I sought out at my dentist I was working for who was doing Invisalign and I did Invisalign I realized after doing Invisalign that if I didn't wear my retainers every single night without fail, my teeth were starting to shift. So I started questioning why, why was that happening? Realizing it was my tongue posture. Mm -hmm. I had low or I had middle tongue posture. I had the scalloping on the side. Mm -hmm. I had the restless sleep because my tongue was not placed in the proper, I was not breathing very well at night. So I'm, decided to investigate and that's how I found my functional therapy. Taking my initial coursework was such an eye-opener. Now I'm able to, I still wear my retainers, but I can go two, three, four, five nights without having to wear them, knowing that I have good tongue posture, so my teeth really are not going to shift anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find. It's very anecdotal. There's no proven um, um, research. However, for me, it, it works. Mm -hmm. Relearning, retraining, habituating, having good rest posture. It's like our regular posture. Having good posture in the mouth is imperative yeah. for, for health. And so people who are visual, if you have a child with passy mouth or pacifier mouth, um, or a thumb sucker like myself, the teeth will flare around where the uh, pacifier would sit or where the thumb would sit. So now picture this flare. Now teeth should normally sit like this. So the tongue, in terms of functioning, when you want to say things, words, um, your tongue should hit certain spots on your palate and your, your lips should seal a certain way. So what happens is you compensate. So you're either going to talk with a lisp or you'll do these open mouth smiles when you're taking a picture where your tongue fills in the space. All these habituations to function and take pictures and talk are going to keep your tongue in the position that's going to keep the teeth flared. Mm -hmm. So people understand that it's as you're growing, it even ha you don't outgrow it just because you bring the teeth back together. The tongue goes where it knows. So as a memory. Yes. And we're, I'm, I'm working on creating new memory. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm really grateful to Jessica for giving me her time so we can help people understand the importance of this. So hopefully when I refer people, they go so that I can work in conjunction with their office in getting the teeth and the airway developed to where we need it to be. So thank you so much, Jessica. This thank is really you. informative. This was a great opportunity. I really appreciate it. Awesome.